DevOps is something related to both dev team and operations team. Okay. So you might have heard this term DevOps quite frequently. It is uh, in the last two or three years, many people have heard DevOps, but nobody is sure what is it. There's always a confusion what is Dev and Ops. Many people say this and that, but still people are not very clear. Many people are not clear what is DevOps is. Okay. So first thing is we need to understand what is DevOps. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a culture, there's a process, there's so many definitions. I'll talk about in this. First thing is why DevOps? All the, we need to first understand what is DevOps, why DevOps, and what are the tools. All these things we'll be covering in this particular presentation. So DevOps is not separate silos. It is not only dedicated to for Dev or Ops. It is something wherein you have a smooth collaboration between a development team and operations team. Why? It's because the developer teams, they do the coding, correct? And they build it. So unless until they have a proper interaction with operations, they the output, I'm talking about release management and the upgrades, water release after the build is over, it will not be proper. Proper sizing must be done before itself, after which this infrastructure should be properly deployed. So lots of challenges you, you will find in the companies wherein if something happens to the application after it's been released to production, production team would come and say that this is not my problem and they put the blame on developer team. So to avoid all this confusion between the various teams, so culture was brought in. Obviously, all the tools which is existing developer and operations, all the tools were being, being used, but the culture wherein people were not working together the uh, process between uh, the feedback of, of each and every stage, all this were not done properly. So DevOps is a process wherein development team and operations team, they follow a process, they follow a culture so that the final customer's objective, I'm talking about the application is performance and other objectives are properly modeled. This is about DevOps, a simple definition. So why DevOps? The first advantage is, is obviously efficiency. So Customers require their application to be deployed faster and more efficient without much of confusion or any errors. So what will happen is development and operations are totally told about. They always have some confusion. But if they start interacting uh, between the various stages, for example, building a code or uh, developing or whatever stage is using, whenever they can, if they have a process wherein uh, they can interact with operations team, get a feedback, and uh, make the changes. The output would be good. The first one is efficiency. Predictability is lower rate uh, file rate of new releases. So new releases also you you are sure because for, uh, before it released to a production environment, normally a release is first done on a sandbox environment, a test environment. So in a sandbox environment, once it goes, you do some tests on it infrastructure. If any errors are there, you rectify it. Okay, then the next stage is goes for a development stage, development environment. Then after development is a validation phase. So in all these phases, you would ensure that it is working fine, customer is not working fine, application working fine. If there are any issues, at last, you release the production environment. So reproducibility is version everything. What is version everything? Version everything is uh, wherein uh, you, you make some changes, okay? And you want to know who made what changes. That is called a version everything. So uh, this is something I will talk about more detail in version control systems. Maintainability, faster time to recovery in the event of a new release. Crashing or otherwise disabling the current system. You can also easily recover if anything happens because you know at which stage what error happened. So you can go back to the specific stage where the issue happened and then you can rectify the issue. So as you see here, DevOps is something which breaks down the wall of confusion between development team and operations team. So this knowledge you need to have first thing before you get into more concepts of DevOps. So there's one more diagram wherein you see a development person or IT operations team. So they communicate, they collaborate, they do the integration, and they also ensure that each and every phase, I'm talking about 
starting from the build stage, code stage, test stage, if everything is automated, it means that each and every phase, you again check continuous. So the reason in DevOps, the word continuous is used. I'll talk about the next slide. So in each and every stage, starting from deployment, integration, development, and testing each and every phase, the continuous feedback is provided between both the teams. Hence, the quality of the code or the process or the release, everything is very good. So it's DevOps is a culture or a process which is followed across the company and Agile and DevOps hand in hand. Uh, so before DevOps, there were two models being used. One was waterfall method, another one is Agile. Although these two methods, waterfall method was uh, quite old, it had some challenges, hence Agile technology was brought in. Agile technologies, it was good, but it had a challenge wherein not, not much was automated using Agile. So DevOps was, is into more into automation plus getting a feedback within both the teams. So the various building blocks with development team works on are code building and test, and these are done by operations team. So as I told, each and every phase, code build test, if they work separately, obviously the code which is built in, once it goes to, to here, there will be some issues. So normally uh, when in the company, you would have a team a meeting called as configuration management database. In this meeting, normally what they do is the development team, the application team, the product team, and the operations team, they work together. They understand the technical architecture diagram of the application and accordingly size of how many servers are required, how many VMs are required, how much of storage required, what type of URLs to provision, what software is required. All this understanding is normally done as part of CMDB meeting, wherein you come to understand, then the final sheet of CMDB is confirmed. And once the CMDB details are shared by the product team or the application team, the operations team goes ahead and starts creating the virtual servers, which could be used for deploying the application. This is how normally in the company, the configuration management process being done when all the teams work together. Initially, the deployment would be done for a training environment. Then it goes to development environment, validation at last production. Also in some cases, DR environment also be provisioned. DR is the same replica of the production. So these all comes under here. So these are the various stages when people have to work together. So you need to have proper communication, collaboration, integration, automation. So the, what is the life cycle DevOps? So DevOps life cycle as I told, from the code building till it goes to production and after production to monitoring, all these are part of DevOps life cycle. Starting first with push code, wherein you create a code using tools like Git. You can create a code. Then you make the changes, fetch the code. That fetch it means something like once you create the code, you commit it to repository, fetch the code. Then once it is committed, you run unit tests. Unit tests might be multiple uh, tests. One is something like a smoke test, wherein you check the workflow, whether the workflow is working fine. You can also have a performance test report. So performance tests are wherein you would try to access the application from different users or from multiple users and check the application performance, whether it is able to withstand the load. If it's not withstand, able to withstand the load or any error, you would try to make changes from the infrastructure point of view as well as from an application point of view. You build artifacts, store artifacts, provision environment, this we're talking about. First, you will deploy a test environment, then you'll go to a development, validation, all these things. So deploy, you start building the application, and after the application is built, you run load and functional tests. The last stage is released into production. So for each and every phase, the first phase is here. What do you see here? Push, where you use Git tools. Next one is build. You can use Maven or Ant. Testing, you can use Selenium tool. And the next one is continuous management. So here, integration, all this thing is all over here. So this is where you start using tools like Puppet, Chef, and those tools you can start. And you can also use Docker management. The last one would be the performance test, then it goes to production. So these are the various phases of uh, DevOps. And as you see here, 
every phase can, has a continuous. It means that in each and every cycle of DevOps, there would be an uh, understanding or a communication between a production uh, development team and operations team to understand whether is this correct, any feedbacks, make a changes. So as I told, these are the various things. So starting from continuous deployment you have, then continuous integration, continuous testing, development. So continuous development is where software is continuously created. Continuous testing is software is continuously tested for bugs. Continuous integration is, for example, once you have application running it, if you want to integrate new functionality, you can also use tools like Jenkins, which is continuous integration. Continuous deployment, wherein you deploy it to a various uh, environment and finally leads to a production environment. Continuous monitoring is once you add it to the production, the least production environment, you have to ensure that the application performance is working fine. So you install tools like Nagios tool, or uh, you can also use, uh, for example, in cloud, you also use CloudWatch monitoring AWS. You can use these tools, configure the threshold levels, and you can start monitoring in the real time. So you see continuous, so as Continuous is very much important. It means that always there is an improvement each and every life cycle stage. The various tools used in each and every cycle is, first one is for development, that is Git. In build and test, you can Selenium, uh, and is for testing, Gradle and Maven, and all this is for building. Continuous integration using Jenkins tool for configuration management deployment, the various tools used as Chef, Puppet, and Sybil. There are also quite a few, but these are normally quite famous. Monitoring, you can use Nagios, New Relic, Sensor. So this is about the various tools which we'll talk about, and DevOps is about all these things. So under continuous development, we'll talk about what is Git and what is GitHub. So Git is a distributed version control system wherein you can have a copy of the central repository on your system and people can work, the developers can do the work offline. They can make changes, they can modify it, and then they can commit to a local repository. And every day, based on duration, you can start uploading or committing to central repository. So push is something you update your local repository, uh, center repository, pull is something, you download the latest updated configuration files to your local repository. So we'll see all these things in detail on Git topic. In continuous testing, we'll talk about tools like Selenium. We'll talk about how to test the tools. All these things. And the continuous testing, we'll talk about Jenkins. So Jenkins is a tool which integrates all the tools. As you see here, Git, build tool, Continuous monitoring, containers, configuration management, continuous testing, all this could be used, integrated using Jenkins tool. The continuous deployment, we'll talk about these tools. What is Chef, what is Puppet, Ansible, all this concept will uh, look into detail. In continuous monitoring, we will go ahead and install tools like Nagios tool. And I'll help you out of how to install, how to configure Nagios tool. So a case study, I would like to talk about a case study. So in 2011, uh, Facebook uh, rolled out F new features like timeline, ticker, and all the features. And it almost had around 500 million users across the world. The huge traffic was there, and uh, Facebook was not able to manage the environment. So any features they released, they had lots of challenges, and they were not sure what to do. So what they did was, initially, before it was released, they tested it using a new features on a smaller and specific user base. This is called as dark launching. Dark launching is something wherein, before releasing, you test it on the environment, check whether it's working fine, and then you release the production environment. So once they deployed on a test environment, then they started monitoring what is happening, whether the users are able to access it properly or not, is there any challenges, how the speed could still be improved, all the at first. Once it was developed, the feedback was implemented, tested, 
then that leads to the production. This is how and normally in DevOps, many companies, they use this concept called as dark launching, wherein first they test it on a test environment, check in if it's working fine, they monitor it regularly, and if the uh, success they achieve, they go ahead and release to the production environment. This is how internally a DevOps environment works, wherein they all work together to get the final release to the production. So as you see here, Facebook use dark launching technique. This is a process of gradually rolling the production ready features to a select set of users before a full release. This allowed development teams to get user feedback early on, test bugs and also stress test unit infrastructure performance. A direct result of continuous delivery, this method release has been faster, more added releases that ensure that application performance does not get affected and the release is well achieved by customers. So it was released only for a few people initially. They understood whether it's working fine. Once some, uh, I mean, for example, 10 users, they gave access for these things. They're using able to use fine. And then the features or whatever they release, it was available to everyone. And all the users are able to use those new features with ease of use. So this is a simple use case using DevOps. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos do look out for other related videos in our playlist for more information visit our website now keep learning with intellipat